What's up guys? Today we're going to take a look at the Alienware M15R2. Alienware's new M15R2 is the thin and light that Alienware has been trying to make for a while. It's definitely thinner and lighter than the previous generation, which you can see in the description. It comes in dark side of the moon, or for people who like a brighter color, lunar light. The dark side of the moon features a matte finish all throughout the palm rest, the exterior, basically everywhere. And the lunar light has a nice bright look to it and it really stands out. Oh, what do we have here? This is discoloration. So this is an issue that I've seen a few people have as well on the white model. So when choosing the white color, be careful because this does happen. The back features RGB lighting as for a Tron light and the Alienware head. And the keyboard is very bright with RGB per key lighting, which is nice. When compared to a 2013 MacBook Pro, the size of the M15R2 isn't that bad. It's only a little bit deeper. And in terms of the thickness, the thickest point of the M15R2 is only slightly thicker than the MacBook from 2013. Looking at the device, the keyboard is not that bad. It definitely has some decent travel. And the palm rest has a nice soft touch finish where the touchpad, however, is kind of small in the vertical department. Now, scrolling on here isn't that bad. It's pretty smooth, it has precision drivers, but I feel like there's a split second lag. And in terms of the palm rest, the feel is slightly different than the other models from previous generation. It doesn't feel the same. Here, normally we would have Toby eye tracking, but this is the normal model. And the bezels are quite thin, not bad, but the plastic does get scratched. In terms of IO, we have Noble Lock, the exhaust, Ethernet, the USB Type A, and a headphone jack. On the right side, we have an exhaust and two USB Type A's. In the back, we have two exhaust vents again, a power jack, amplifier, Thunderbolt port, mini display port, and HDMI. Speaking of the amplifier, I think it's really nice that you can just plug in the power and amplifier cable and probably an ethernet and just turn on the computer and have something like a Radeon 7 power and external display with the USB ports. That's really nice and it works really well actually. In terms of the bottom, we have some rubber feet. They're pretty thick on the top and bottom. We have speakers on the side that are down firing unfortunately and we have this hexagon pattern that, with two fans on each side. Serviceability, or should I say non-serviceability. When you open it, you have your battery and you have two M.2 SSD slots, but looking around at the bottom of the laptop, I found there is basically nothing. There's nothing here that you can service besides that, and the Wi-Fi card, it's soldered. So basically everything on here is soldered, so you cannot replace nothing. And the motherboard has an inverted design, so repasting it, you have to disassemble the whole laptop just to disassemble it and repaste it. One misconception I want to get out of the way is the RAM. This one features the 8GB RAM, but on the website it says 1 times 8 gigabytes. This is false. It's actually dual channel. It's 2 times 4. And what's funny is even in their own internal document, you can see that it's running in dual channel even in the 8GB configuration. However, because it's soldered, I definitely recommend going for 16GB. As for the display, it has a 1080p display, 60Hz with 25ms response and 300 nit brightness. The viewing angles are actually pretty good, but I definitely recommend going for the 240Hz or 4K. In terms of the speakers, I highly recommend turning off these settings because it doesn't sound natural. So let's see how they do sound. So the speakers do get loud. It does lack bass, there's no dedicated subwoofer, but with my settings, I found it to sound much better, but it doesn't sound as good as like a MacBook Pro, let's say. So it definitely needs some work there. So let's try out some games. Listen for the fan noise, you're about to hear a real fan. So we got 68 FPS in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and look at those CPU temps. Let's try out a different game like The Division 2 and see if we get anything different.
As you can see, we got 58 FPS, which isn't that bad, but that CPU is really high. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and undervolt both CPU and GPU and see where this goes. Check out the link in the description because I do have guides on how to do this. So let's do this and see what happens to the performance and let's just see. As you can see, we only gained 1 FPS, but the temperatures, if you look carefully, were much better and the clock speeds were actually stable. So I definitely recommend doing that. Next, let's run some benchmarks. So as you can see, we received over 14,000 score, but this doesn't seem as good as it can be. Let's try undervolting it, and as you can see, undervolting made a really good difference, especially on that physics score, which is CPU. So let's try out TimeSpy and see what happens there. In TimeSpy, we got a little over 6,000, so this isn't too bad, but again, I don't think this is as good as this computer can do. So let's try one more time with an undervolt and see what happens. As you can see, we got much better performance on the CPU again, and again, I cannot stress how much undervolting is needed. As you can see here, this is a Cinebench thing that I did. This is out of the box, and it's reaching 100 on two cores. But with an undervolt and some airflow down from below, it actually performs much better. I highly recommend seeing if you have this same issue with only like two cores reaching 100, because that could be like a thermal paste issue or thermal pad. In terms of battery life, I was able to get 4.5 hours on the R2, which is better than the R1 with the 60 watt hour battery. And it was able to beat my MacBook Pro a little bit as well, but you have to keep in mind the MacBook Pro is like 6 years old, so the battery might not be as good. The M15 90 watt hour battery does perform better, but 4.5 is not bad in my test. This is actually acceptable to me, but there are better out there. So with that said, I really like the design of the M15 R2. I like this new legendary design. The keyboard doesn't feel that bad. It's, it has less, lots of travel. The touchpad is made out of glass, has precision drivers, so that's all great. For the display, I recommend the 240Hz or 4K for creative content. Don't get the 60Hz unless you absolutely don't care because those displays look much better. I mean, this display doesn't look bad. I was kind of shocked to see how nice the base model display looked, but I do recommend that. For RAM, get 16 gigabytes. It's soldered. You can't do anything after. And I, I only had five gigabytes free when I was booted to a desktop. Three gigabytes were being used by Windows already. So there's that. And the temperatures, I didn't like that. I had to undervolt. I had to put like a cooling fan underneath the laptop to really get rid of that 100 degrees Celsius. What's weird is it's only two cores actually. The other cores were not as bad. So I'm assuming it's bad thermal paste or bad thermal pad placement, heat sink's not even. So if you're tech savvy and you can fix that, then that's great. If undervolting helps you in your system, then that's great. But if none of those help you, return it, get a different one. And if that still has issues, let me know in the comments so I, I can tell how bad you know the temperature thing is. Alienware still sells the M15 R1 and, R and M17 R1. Those computers have upgradable RAM up to 64 gigabytes supported, replaceable Wi-Fi, and that's about it actually. So if you need more RAM, you can get that. Alienware did say that they're working on 32 gigabytes for this model, but that was a few months ago. So I wouldn't hold my breath on that too much. They might not even do it. Who knows? They might have just said that. So with that said, if you can control the temperatures, or if you get a unit that doesn't have the issues minded with the thermal throttling 100 degrees instantly, if undervolting helps you, then I recommend this laptop. It's not bad, the design's great, the size is perfect actually. For an Alienware, this is, a, this is you know, shocking. With that said, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. As always, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.